DWAX stock is the title of today's presentation, and the reason that we decided to cover DWAX stock is because we saw a lot of interest from investors plugging things into Google like DWAX stock price prediction and things like that. So it seemed that a lot of the people investigating this stock didn't really have any clue what they were investing in just based on the questions that they were asking. So let's start by addressing the story. And for the foreigners in the room, so this would be about 50% of the people that are paying subscribers at Nanalyze here, or 50% of the people that read our content or view our videos are from foreign countries. And I wanted to tell them a little story about a country that was uh, once quite prosperous, still is to a certain extent. And this country had two groups that formed. So they had horses and woolly mammoths. Those were the animals that represented each group. Each group had good aspects and bad aspects. They still do. And I think the best analogy here would be to think about the way that you are as a parent. So you want to teach your child to be compassionate and kind and giving to others. But at the same time, you don't want them to be naive. You want them to learn the value of hard work. So the harder you work, the luckier you get. So there's a balance there. And these two groups are meant to balance each other synergistically. And they did to a certain extent. But today we have a situation in this country where these two groups won't talk to each other. And the real problem there is what's called the disgust factor. And that's very dangerous when you see two opposing groups start to talk about each other using words that trigger the disgust emotion because that leads to things like war so or let's say violence right um, and when you look at these two groups what's funny is that when you see one group criticize the other you're when you see these criticisms you're not even sure which side it's coming from because sometimes it's a valid it's a valid criticism for both parties and you see when they say things like one party says well i want to work on making things better or say making things great and then the other party says, well, I want to work on building better things. Well, you're saying exactly the same thing. But if you say one of those things, it's really bad. And the other, well, it's really good. And it just depends on who you say those things in front of. So it's all become very political. And what's happened now is when you talk about the woolly mammoths favorably, the horses get quite upset, more so than vice versa. Now, what happened in this country is that the leader of the woolly mammoths decided to create a publicly traded company. That's what DWAC stock is. Some immediate problems here that you can probably anticipate. They're quite intuitive. When something like that happens in a pol politically charged polarized environment, investing acumen will be thrown out the door in favor of emotion. And you'll have a lot of newbie investors attracted to the theme simply as a protest vote almost, or a vote of support for their political party. Well, the, the bigger problem here is that this quote unquote investment that we're talking about, DWAC stock, isn't what investors think it is. And this isn't a problem specific to this particular situation. It's a problem we've seen across the board over the last several years in SPACs. So if you don't know what a SPAC is, now's a good time to learn. We've been researching SPACs and warning about them uh, for coming up on three years now. And I've highlighted one of the pieces that we wrote. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. It's called How SPACs Reward Everyone Except Retail Investors. Now, you probably may not know what a SPAC is, so let's talk about that real quick. The acronym stands for Special Purpose Acquisition Company. There's really four stakeholders here, okay? There's a private company that wants to go public. They want their shares to be available for the public to buy on the stock market. Then you have institutional investors ponying up lots of cash for the deal. They're going to give some of that to the private company, and then they're going to give some of that to the SPAC sponsor. This is the person that's pulling the deal together. Then you have retail investors that are buying shares in the publicly traded company. Well, the outcome is something like this. The private company raises money with almost no effort at ridiculously inflated valuations. Why? Because the traditional IPO process solves a lot of these problems and vets these firms and say, listen, that valuation that you're trying to, that lofty valuation you're trying to sell, that's ridiculous. So they'll put them in check where with SPACs, none of that process took place. So 
the institutional investors, they'll make a profit because they'll sell their shares to retail investors at a premium. So all SPACs, nearly all, are priced at $10 a share. Now, that has nothing to do with the intrinsic value of the company, but it's an easy way to keep track of performance. Now, the real bandit here would be the SPAC sponsor. They laugh all the way to the bank. They make tens of millions of dollars just by closing the deal. So what you understand now is that the most important thing for most of the stakeholders is to close that deal no matter what. And then you have retail investors. They're the chumps left holding the bag. How bad are we talking, Willis? Well, this we've looked at 98 SPACs, all right, 98 disruptive technology SPACs. We invested in one. The average of those, so that's in our tech stock catalog, which covers 460 tech stocks. We have a column called SPAC. You turn that on, that flag, and then you can see the quickly see the performance. Average SPAC has lost 62% of its value to date. Well, you need to benchmark that against the NASDAQ, right? To appropriate benchmark, but that's still pretty bad. Half have lost 75% or more, and over a fifth have lost 90% or more. And there's somewhere around eight bankruptcies now that have happened. Just four of those 98 names trade at 5% or more over the $10 debut price. So what's the takeaway here? Well, we're DWAC stock is a SPAC. So now we know, well, we're entering a domain that hasn't historically performed very well. It's been quite problematic for retail investors. That's the takeaway. So let's talk about the SPAC. It's called Digital World Acquisition Corp. There you see the acronym, DWAC, D-W-A-C. This is a shell company that was formed to affect a business combination with an entity in fintech, tech, or media. So what they've done is they've gathered all the cash together. They say, we're going to go find a private company to take public. Well, they decided to take a um, private company public that got the attention of lots of retail investors for, as we mentioned, political reasons. And look what happened here. So in February of last year, they drove the price of these shares up to $97. So remember, we're talking about cash that's been ponied up at $10 a share, right? That's the cash that the, the $10 a share represents the pool of cash. So that's the intrinsic value. Nine times that value for what? It's nothing but hype. And you can see here that share, shares settled back down to $13. They're still drastically overpriced, so we're going to explain why that is. But you can see here that this SPAC has undergone a lot of hype. Now, the reason for that, one component of that, is a social media platform called Truth Social. And it's described as being a massive market opportunity where they're building a non-cancelable global community. Well, if you're in the U.S., you might know what that refers to. But essentially, the idea there is that they want to build this big media network that caters to the woolly mammoths who, are, uh, who aren't being sufficiently catered to in the current media, which leans towards the horses. So here you can see... And we'll go ahead and address the elephant in the room. It's Trump Media and Technology Group, TMTG. That's the private company that DWAC stock represents. But you're not investing in that. And we're going to explain why that is, because the SPAC deal hasn't closed yet. But here you can see three components of Trump Media and Technology Group, or TMTG. See Truth Social there in the upper left? Problem. So when this SPAC was visualized or when they came up with this idea, Elon Musk hadn't bought Twitter. And when he did, I think that really threw a monkey wrench in this idea because Elon Musk, when you read this back deck, at least how it relates to Twitter, kind of did what they wanted to do with Truth Social. So that posed a particular problem in which Elon Musk is trying to balance things out between the horses and the woolly mammoths. Now, when we look here at how they're trying to value this, they're simply taking Twitter, Netflix, and iHeart, a podcasting network there, and saying, well, we have all this potential revenue from all these users. And in looking through the deck, it's really weak. And here you can see where they made the comparison between Twitter's valuation and Truth Social. Again, this was when Twitter was a publicly traded company. But the SPAC deck is nothing but a lot of ideas and very little substance. And here you can see one of their slides in the SPAC deck. 
This is actually our infrastructure stack here at Nanolize. These are the problems that um, I work on as, as the founder of Nanolize. I'm, I'm quite concerned with these various things. And this is a big nothing burger. This says nothing. And they have actually two slides that relate to infrastructure. This is a given. This is just what any company has. And when you look at their pro forma revenue projections, this is characteristic of every SPAC out there. They just pull numbers out of their ass and then never hit them. And here you can see they've said, well, in 2022, we're going to have 16 million users. In 2023, 41. Well, I just looked at cursory search on Google from three sources say they have about 2 million. So they're far, far away from where they said they're going to be. And another puzzling thing here, so ARPU is actually okay. That's average revenue per user. That's reasonable based on what other social networks are doing. But when you look here at the revenue coming from True Social, then you see TMTG. That's the other bits. They haven't even established those. And look at how rapidly those rise and suddenly manifest themselves as $3.6 billion in 2026. And for anybody that's watching this and thinks we're being ultra critical, this is pretty typical of most SPACs. And the earlier slide where we talked about how uh, over a fifth of them had lost 90% of their value, this is why. So th this is just a problem with SPACs. Now, the bigger problem here, the showstopper, this deal hasn't closed yet, okay? Today, right now, you hold shares of a shell company worth less than $10 a share. Why? Because if this deal unravels, there's going to be fees and whatnot, and the leftover cash is what belongs to you. So let's say that's $2 a share they need for all the expenses and everything, and you, you're left with $8 a share. You don't know what that's going to be, but it's going to be less than $10 a share. Where is this at in terms of when the deal closes? Well, the company secured their shareholder support to extend this merger deadline to September of this year. So we have to wait and see if this actually goes through. If the deal goes through, expect hype, even though intrinsic value probably drops if the deal goes through, frankly, based on history, uh, expect hype to boost those shares. And again, if you're a speculator, uh, not an investor, then that might excite you, but we're investors here at Nanalyze. If the deal fails, uh, we'd probably expect that SPAC to try and pivot into some other deal relating to that and, and try to spin it as a positive. But in our uh, opinion, based on all the SPACs that we've been analyzing uh, over the past several years, this whole thing is best avoided. So with absolute certainty, we can say DWAC stock is not worth more than $10 a share right now. That's just that's a fact. The deal falls through at the, and they don't pivot. And even if they do, it's rare that uh, there's a successful pivot when a SPAC deal falls through. The stock will be worth $10 a share minus whatever costs were incurred. And if the deal goes through, history tells us it's highly unlikely that the intrinsic value is worth more than $10 a share, especially when you take a good look at that SPAC deck and the value proposition what, with what happened with Twitter and everything that's presented in that deck. It's really weak sauce. So use this opportunity to learn how to be a proper investor and not a speculator. And I've put up a, sl a slide here or a video that you should watch next that talks a little bit about that. But before you click that video, please click our logo on the right, subscribe to our channel. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this today.